Great. Yes, we can see. Great, great. So I'd like to talk to you about the modular OGC API workflows. Um, so this is a project that uh, we've been leading uh, last year, uh, which ended in March of this year. Um, and basically it led through the, um, the development of a, a new uh, extension for um, OGC API processes. And that connects multiple OGC API specifications together. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it's a, it was a collaborative project by ourselves and other OGC members, uh, as well as additional uh, uh, two Canadian research centers. Uh, I apologize because uh, some of the members are, are not showing right now because of some uh, bugs in open office. So some logos are missing. Uh, but yeah, the Université Laval and the Institut National de Recherche Scientifique were the two uh, collaborators. Um, and we have EOX, we had uh, Razdaman, we had uh, Cubeworks, Crim, Curaf. Um, we also have uh, specialists uh, with Evan working on, on GDAL as part of this project. Uh, we had also uh, uh, the Pangea Elevation. Uh, Pange yeah, Pangea Innovation and, and uh, another few that unfortunately is not showing here. Um, so uh, in a nutshell, the idea behind the workflows and training extension uh, is it provides the ability to chain nested processes and also to refer to external processes and collections that are accessible via the OGC API standards and to trigger the execution of process uh, through OGC API delivery, uh, data delivery specification like features, styles, maps, and uh, coverages. Uh, so uh, base, uh, if you start from OGC, from OGC API processes core, uh, what you can add is nested process. Uh, so the input to a process can be another process. And also you can describe an input to be an OGC API collection without going into a specific request. So for example, you, you can uh, just say, I'm going to use this collection of data, but you don't have to say, well, this, this data uses OGC API features, or you don't have to say, um, this uh, uses this specific building uh, bounding box or this specific resolution. Uh, you can leave, up, uh, leave that up for, for later. For example, at the time that the client comes in and negotiate uh, with content negotiation, um, and also you can define uh, a workflow in a way that it will work for different areas. So you can, it makes it more reusable uh, by leaving this out of the workflow. And also w one thing it could do is you could define a, a workflow as part of nested processes, and then you could present the workflow as a whole as one process. Uh, so that's where the chain input parameter comes in because it would allow you to, to plug in an input into that workflow that then gets used at a specific place within this workflow. And um, so it, the idea is that it introduces new execution mode. Um, so instead of only getting um, uh, in OGC API process core, there's the concept of uh, synchronous and asynchronous execution. Um, so this adds a new concept where instead of actually starting a job right away, you just register the workflow. So you make the server aware that this is what you want to do. And then the way to actually trigger the processing will be by making OGC API data requests, like asking for a specific tile or asking for a specific feature. And that is what will actually trigger the processing. Um, and uh, you don't need to specify output uh, because, uh, again, the output can, are, are um, you, you negotiate what output uh, you need by simply uh, using the content negotiation. Um, it's actually now in the, in the final version of OGC API processes uh, core, uh, the outputs are optional now. Uh, so if you don't specify the output, you will get uh, the default format for all the outputs. Um, so, so the idea is uh, how, how this works. Uh, it's, it's very simple. Uh, so this, uh, this mode to, uh, to, uh, to just register your workflow. So you post your workflow um, to the process execution endpoint. Uh, now again, uh, so as part of this project, we've actually uh, worked a lot um, 
uh, with the different OGC API specifications to try to make progress uh, specifically on, on OGC API uh, processes. And so there was a lot of, of things changing along the way uh, throughout the project. Um, so at this point, to, uh, we're finalizing the, the part three. We need to, to do some work based on the latest changes in uh, OGC API processes score. So exactly how you would say, I want to execute this as a, a, what, a deferred uh, execution is the mode we call this, it is still to be determined. But you would post your workflow to the execution endpoint and somehow say that, well, you want to execute it um, and I want to get back a landing page or I want to get back a collection um, collection document as a response. So, uh, so that's still to be uh, specified. And once you've done this, the next thing you do is you submit your OGC API request, just like you would uh, if it was just a coverages or a features or a maps or a tile server. And this is what is going to trigger based on the, for example, if you use the subset parameter in coverages, uh, or if you use the V box uh, in maps, it's going to say, well, you're interested in processing this particular area here. Um, so, so some of the, things uh, that were done. Um, uh, so EOX implemented uh, using PyGU API, uh, some processing on the Euro data cube. Um, and one of the things that allowed to do is a, a generic Python coverage processor. Uh, so we would, uh, for example, point to uh, the collection that offers uh, the Sentinel-2 uh, data product. And then we could say uh, directly by specify a Python function in um, in in the the workflow document and so first we pose this so this uh, one here as you can see it uh, calculates an NDVI and after that this makes once you once you've posted this the workflow is registered and then you do OGC API coverages requests uh, and you get back a coverage with uh, these two bands here the NDVI and the scale value of, of band four. So basically this allows to do coverage processing in a very flexible manner using uh, familiar tools like Python. And uh, you register this once and, and then uh, clients, uh, just regular clients can, can make data requests. And it's triggered on the fly for the area of interest. And the way they implemented this was actually with Jupyter Lab in, in, in the backend. Um, so this was an example of the server-side Python uh, NDVI in our Gnosis Cartographer client. Um, so uh, another thing that was done as part of the project was uh, Razdaman implemented support for uh, OGC API coverages uh, in Razdaman. So we are also testing, uh, retrieving coverages, installing them client-side in our client. Um, this is Sentinel-2 data from the Euro Data Cube uh, that is showing in uh, QGIS as part of the new OGC API driver that was developed as part of this project in, in GDAL. And then this is, um, again, in uh, QGIS uh, showing uh, data coming from both the Razdaman and our uh, HRA Gnosis map server um, using OGC API coverages and I believe it's, uh, yeah, both our coverages. Um, and then we had also an, another part of the project uh, was um, experimenting with the WCPS, the Web Coverage Processing Service uh, from Razdaman, uh, which was integrated as part of the OGC API. Um, and what we did is we, we uh, built um, an adapter that connects the web coverage processing service with this idea of an OGC uh, API processes workflow. So it's just like the Python example earlier on the Euro Data Cube, uh, it's, it's, it's actually very similar here. Um, but this is a generic, uh, so this is a process that basically, uh, instead of understanding Python, it understands uh, WCPS. And it was relaying the processing to the Razdaman service. Um, but it, it, you can see it's actually uh, very similar here, but then you have actual WCPS script, uh, which then gets sent to the, the server. So you, you can define one process using WCPS, 
And then that once that process is registered, you can reuse it to to perform that particular MDVI operation or whichever operation you define. Um, another topic was uh, doing uh, crop classification. Uh, we used the random forest classification algorithm um, with the uh, scikit-learn uh, library for Python. Um, and again, so so we deployed one process that, that was um, using this uh, implemented Python code. And uh, and then you point to the source data, uh, which will serve to uh, as source for the classification, which in this case, we use the Sentinel-2 provided by the Euro Data Cube. And, uh, and then as you would uh, move around, it would classify the, the area of interest or the resolution of interest. Um, so when we, uh, the experiment we did, we, we use um, imagery from three different season, uh, spring, summer, and fall. And we use a, a database of uh, known uh, parcel crops so that we actually know what these crops are for the training. Um, trouble going to the next slide. Sorry. My, uh, <laughs> sorry, it crashed. Uh, All right. Uh, really having trouble with this. Try this one. Sorry, we'll reuse these slides from. Uh, um, okay, so uh, when you would, uh, so the idea with a crop classification is we could also do a coverage style request. So that would just keep your coverages as a conformance class for tiles. So you could ask for a, a specific tile and then you would get the, the classification coverage as a result. Um, another example we used was a, a contour generator. So you can point to a process that generates contours, and then you point to an input, which can be a, a coverage, and you can specify parameters like the distance between contours, the geometry type, min and max height. And this was one example of that um, with, uh, yeah, with the worldwide uh, elevation data from uh, SRTM. Uh, and this again, uh, with uh, together with our 3D uh, visualization client, you can see the, the contours. Um, another aspect of uh, the work was uh, focusing on uh, point cloud processing. So we use uh, a data set with uh, over a billion points uh, uh, over uh, Quebec, which was provided by the Université Laval. And um, uh, one of the things we did was trying to extract the, the building footprints and then from the building footprints doing some extrusion. And uh, so one other um, aspect that we tested on was actually incorporating the height in information to add it to OpenStreetMap data. Uh, so trying to uh, augment the OpenStreetMap data with elevation of the buildings from, from the point cloud. Um, uh, and uh, another aspect here. So this particular, uh, yeah. So that this is uh, the one here. So it points to the OSM data, and it points to the the point cloud, and then the the result is uh, an OpenStreetMap data set with added elevation. Uh, another aspect of the scenario was at trying to uh, find roads with, which are more accessible by uh, having the minimum change in elevation. Uh, so that's some of the screenshot of the point cloud visualization. So it's a fairly large area around Quebec City. And you can see the, the detail here, it looks. Um, so this is uh, so this is the, the elevation that was added to the OpenStreetMap buildings. Um, and then this is a nested uh, workflow, which basically tries to uh, render a map, uh, which uh, use our routing engine. 
which uses a source, the OSM uh, around uh, DC, Washington, DC, the, the road values. And, and then it integrates both the, the rendering of, of uh, tiles from uh, ArcGIS Online with uh, the roads from our um, OpenStreetMap routing engine. Uh, this is the route showing on top of the on top of the imagery as part of the nested workflow. Um, and then uh, we also work, uh, so 52 North was another of the contributors as part of the project. Uh, and another thing we did was integrate their routing engine and uh, we visualize the result uh, directly in QGIS. Uh, so we have uh, open street map data coming in as styles and then the result of the uh, route, all part of the same workflow. And, and then uh, also uh, the Java PS uh, from 52 North, they also had an NDVI process that we tested with. And uh, basically we tested uh, um, adding, uh, integrating this as part of our, um, because at, at this point, the Java PS server only implemented OGC API processes core. And um, basically the, our process model adapter allowed to connect uh, a server that only implements the core and to in integrate it within um, the modular workflow system where basically you can use coverage or tiles or feature requests to trigger the processing. Uh, so the nice thing about, about workflows is that uh, you can have uh, processing clients that actually don't implement support for processes, all, all they have to do is, is make the regular coverage or tiles or feature or map requests. Um, so this is uh, the workflow extension. I think will uh, now be the more the focus of, of the um, OGC API processes uh, standard working group in the future, because the, uh, the processes core is, is going to the final stage of approval. Uh, in publication, so we'll be able to focus more on uh, advancing that specification. This probably will be part three of OGC API processes, and, and we do have support uh, for our uh, uh, on our map server uh, for this extension. If you actually want to play with it and try to write a client for it, thank you very much. Thank you, Jerome. Fantastic uh, presentation, and it shows that. Uh, uh, OGC API processes is uh, in a very uh, mature state indeed. Um, I think we don't have any any questions yet, but uh, in the meantime, I would like to ask you, have you seen an interest from the data science machine learning community outside, let's say the GIS world in using uh, OGC API processes? Oh yeah, for sure. I think that's uh, that's a very uh, that's, that's what it's for, right? That's the that's the. I think there's a lot of, and, and I think workflows in particular will will enable things because um, the idea with workflows is you don't have to do to do everything as batch processing anymore. So you can use it makes it easier to use like the latest data available, like as as new satellite imagery comes in. Uh, like the new Landsat 9 that was just launched this week says there's more and more data that's available. Uh, you can always, you, if you write a workflow that works with the latest data um, and you the workflows make it easier to share. So you define the science as a workflow and then people can just access it using uh, simple clients like, like the GDAL library and it triggers the processing behind that. So it, I think it makes it easier. Sure, and in theory, you could use this without any geospatial data, right? Just to process data, or not? Just to, well, it's yeah. In theory, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's not natively. Uh, it's possible. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, it's. Uh, it's there's possible. nothing yeah. inherently geospatial about it. But the, exactly. the, why it's nice for geospatial is because there's this concept that you can move around and you can zoom in and out and. And the nice thing about that is uh, as you, um, if you define a workflow and you want to test it, and especially if it works at different scale, uh, you can test it at a specific scale just to get an idea of what things look like. So you tweak your parameters, your inputs, and then as you can zoom in to, to test it, is, is it, is this better or to get more details? And as you do that, you can again, tweak the workflow again, and it's, uh, you don't have to re 
process the whole thing right like the whole batch or you don't have to it makes it easier also to for the the scientists to do it uh, because it's all done ad hoc on the client side so you don't have to wait for the thing to be deployed and then the, the batch process to be done it's instant feedback uh, of uh, the workflow you want to run and uh, ju just very quickly, I mean, what would you say were the biggest in improvements regarding uh, older standards like w WPS, for instance, for this uh, new way of processing? What will be the, the key highlights for you? Oh, the key highlights. Well, I, I, th I think it's it's much simpler. Like um, if you look at the, like the way you, you make the request, uh, the request yeah. is very, very easy, is very simple. And I think the, the workflows makes it even uh, simpler um, because uh, yeah, clients, uh, they can use the data requests that, that they know that are already implemented so they can leverage uh, existing clients to, to do it. So it, it's very easy to. Sorry, I think you're mute. Sorry, yeah, I, I accidentally mute myself. I, I was I was saying that uh, it's it's more friendly to 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 implementers. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think Jerome, I think you don't have any uh, questions. Uh, maybe uh, people will uh, come back to you later. But you had a lot of claps when you finish your uh, presentation. Well, thank you very uh, so much. So, thank you. I mean, you you can continue the the conversation uh, via chat. Uh, and we will move to to our next uh, uh, presenter. So let me.